Hi, hello, welcome, welcome. I'm Marina, that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants, and welcome to Millennial Planter. Today's video is trendy houseplants that I will never try again. Um, this was inspired actually by a TikTok trend that I did and um, well, the plant community really had a lot of things to say about it and I thought it was really funny and I thought why not make it into a YouTube video and share some pretty common trendy house plants that I'm just not into. And as always, if this is something that you like, definitely go ahead, give the video a thumbs up and while you're down there, click the subscribe button, join the plant hood, and let me know what trendy plants you're not very much into either. Maybe you agree with some of these, maybe you don't agree with some of these. I'd love to know in the comments down below. So let's get into the video. So the first plant on this list is the string of pearls. If you watch any of my videos, you will not be surprised. I, me and string of pearls just don't get along. No matter what I try to do, they always die on me and it is so frustrating. I have tried all the things. I've done bottom watering, top watering, uh, low light, extremely high light. I've done watering when the pearls are pruny, watering when the pearls don't get pruny. Like, everything and these guys still want to die on me and it doesn't make sense because I have a variegated string of pearls that have just been thriving and doing the most <laughs> so I don't know what the difference is I've literally given them both the same care but I've killed four string of pearls at this point love that for me um i know a lot of people agree so if you're struggling with string of pearls it's not you it's them i promise you i swear string of pearls are just on this earth just to die they are not a good house plant next on my list is kind of what i didn't expect to put on this list but the more that i look at this genus the more i'm just kind of cringy towards and that's most syngoniums so don't get me wrong like i love i have like my beautiful basic green syngonium right there and it is getting really big and beautiful and the ears are like nice and just elongated and i love fully matured syngonium if you've never seen like a fully matured one go look it up because they're insane i hate these new varieties that are coming out that kind of have like the frilly edges to them and i actually have one here and it is the syngonium three kings my friend was um nice enough to send me in a trade which is why i have it but you can kind of see like the frilliness of the leaf I don't know if that's even making any sense, but it's literally just the edges of the leaves and they're just like wavy. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's just, it's weird. I don't know why some Syngoniums do this and others don't. I've seen some, I think it's like the Syngonium pink salmon that kind of looks like that and the Syngonium holly. They just have these really frilly edges and I'm just not about it. I also don't like how Syngonium get really bushy before they start to trail. I love when they trail versus when they're really like small and bushy. It's just not my thing. I don't know, but maybe like a Syngonium Winlandii I can kind of get into and kind of like, um, but that's about it. So most, a big majority of the Syngoniums are just a no for me. Plant number three on this list is also, um, it's probably going to be a big shocker because this plant is very popular and that is philodendron micans. I don't know what it is about philodendron micans, but they refuse to grow for me. Actually, I know what it is. For some reason, I've had probably maybe three different philodendron micans throughout my whole like plant parenthood and um they just end up looking really wonky they get super leggy really quick unlike regular philodendrons like regular hartley philodendrons um and then i had one doing really well for me but that's because it was in my grow tent and listen mikeins if you need that much attention and that much care for me to grow you right i'm just gonna save that room in my grow tent for like my hoyas <laughs> i don't want to like put all this extra care into a hartley philodendron uh so they're not my thing i tried really hard again um i actually just threw away my 
my last Mikeins like a month ago because I just can't do it anymore. I can't do it with them. I've tried them in all different lighting settings as well. Like I had it in really high light one time and then I had it in really low light. The Hartley philodendrons grow fine for me, but I don't know, something about those velvety Mikeins that just, no, they don't grow well and I am officially calling it quits with them. <laughs> and that's the same for this next plant on my wish list, which is a philodendron brantianum. <laughs> I feel like this is like a, on a lot, of, a lot of people's wish list, the brantianum or the philodendron brandy. And it's the same thing with the micans. They just, they grow even more wonky. They grow like even half leaves. They'll grow half leaves. That's how mine was, unless it's in super high humidity. And a lot of people are always like, oh, people say they don't like philodendron brandies until they see the mature ones. I've seen the mature ones and they are super beautiful. Don't get me wrong. A big, long, leafy philodendron brandy. Oof, it's beautiful. It's perfection. It's everything I love in a plant, really. But if you're not gonna grow for me and you're gonna be that needy, then I just don't wanna spend my time and effort on that type of plant. <laughs> so that is just my two cents on the philodendron brand tea. Brand tea, you know? um, I actually wanna know if you have the same experience with them. Some people have said that they had that same experience um, where they just end up looking really sick and not so pretty. Um, I haven't had too many people say that they like brandies that much. Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious. Now on to plant number five, or I should say genus number five, because this is pretty much genus wide. Uh, and that is alocasias. So before you say anything, yes, I do have an alocasia right behind me. And it is um, alocasia Friedek. So she's really cute, you know, I'm not even gonna lie. I would love to grow her out big and full and lush, but with that also comes spider mites and thrips. And I've tried this before, I've tried alocasias. I had a stingray for a really long time, but that little, that little witch kept getting thrips and spider mites and I was done. So I gave her to my mom and now she gets spider mites and thrips at my mom's house. <laughs> So in that sense, it's very true for me where like alocasias are just mag magnets to pests. And I just am not about that life. Obviously I'm dealing with a bad thrips outbreak right now. And I don't need a plant that like pests are specifically drawn to. Another thing about alocasias that I cannot stand is this whole dormancy thing. I have an alocasia silver dragon downstairs and she knocked off her last leaf and I was about to throw her away until the next day I saw her little stump coming in with a new leaf. I was like, you're lucky. Because I hate <laughs> wondering if my plant is dead or if it's just dormant. And I, once again, don't have time to deal with that. I don't wanna deal with that. I can get really big, beautiful philodendrons or anthuriums and not worry about if they go dormant. Ugh, that just like, irritates me so much about alocasias and I'm sure there's like certain precautions I can take or like preventatives I can do to make them not go dormant um but my living room gets really cold downstairs and if you can't live there then oh well <laughs> that's just that's what it comes down to in a lot of these plants that I don't like if I can't if I'm giving you the best care that I can give you and you're still not growing well then we're just not meant to be I'm sorry, sis. Like, I know everybody on Instagram says that this plant is great, but you're just not doing it for me. So we're calling it quits. <laughs> now, the next plant, plant number six on this list, is not a very difficult plant. Honestly, I've never even owned this plant, but I just think it's flat out kind of ugly. And that is <laughs> peace lilies. I know, I know, I know. Peace lilies are like, I don't know, they're just a staple, I feel like, in people's plant collections. Um, I love big mature peace lilies. I think those are really cute. And I mean like the huge ones with massive leaves, but I don't really have the space for a big one. So I probably won't ever get a big one. And I just think and like them in their immature state, it's just not really pretty. And their blooms are kind of ugly too. So I, yeah, I just don't get the hype with peace lilies. I mean, I get it, you know, I'm sure they're like really easy care and they're great in like medium to lowish light, 
but eh, I'm gonna pass on the peace lilies. I'm also going to pass on the African violet. I know they say that that's like a grandma type plant and that's kind of what I see when I see African violets too. And I don't know, I'm just not drawn to them at all. I kind of think they're like low-key hideous, even with their blooms, like their blooms make them a little bit cuter, but African violets, I just see them and then I kind of cringe and walk away because yeah, ugh. Yeah, not my thing. And then obviously I'm just gonna throw these in here real quick and that's calatheas and succulents. Hard pass, those should be self-explanatory enough. But the last official plant, the last official trendy plant on this list is fiddle leaf figs, AKA ficus lorata. Hard pass, no, get that plant far away from me. I, me and fiddle, so I got a fiddle um, last year actually, January of last year, and it was doing so well for me. Fiddle had uh, roots that were like probably five inches out of the drainage hole, so it desperately needed a repot. It was in a small little four inch pot. I repotted it and what happened? Literally within a week she dropped all of her leaves and was just a stick. And right after that, I was like, you're too toxic for me, goodbye. Why are they so finicky? I get that they're trees and stuff, but my regular ficus burgundy is not that particular. Like this gal has done absolutely amazing. Thought I saw a mealybug, but it's just diatomaceous earth. She's done absolutely amazing. And look at how beautiful she is. Despite it being winter, she's like in, she was in a really dry room. This room used to be really dry. She doesn't really get like much light other than whatever evening light comes in at five o'clock. And then come summertime, I put her outside and she doubles in size. So Ficus burgundy, Ficus lorata, obviously they're brother and sister. Why is one so easy and the other one is so difficult? And then you go to California and you Florida and you just see these massive fiddles and it's insane and it is so beautiful. So don't get me wrong. I think they're absolutely stunning, but will I be growing it in my collection? Absolutely not. Okay, well that wraps it up for this video. <laughs> Definitely let me know in the comments if you agree with my somewhat unpopular opinions or if you just completely don't understand where I'm coming from. I know some of them, maybe like alocasias, um, hit a little sore spot in your heart, but it's okay. And just because I don't like these plants doesn't mean that you can't try them. Go ahead and try them out and form your own opinion because I'm sure they'll be great and I'm sure they'll grow for you, but not me. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all are staying safe, sane, happy, and healthy, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!